What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Berman. Today is a very exciting day because today, at the time of recording, I think I think we're like 12 hours past the official launch of the second DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the Indigo Disc. And today I am so excited to cover all of the new Pokemon, their abilities. You know, we'll go over some of the moves they get. Most importantly, we'll go over their stats. I'll talk through what I think their potential VGC viability will be, and just generally share in the excitement of new Pokemon to play with, new toys. Now, I'm not gonna go completely over all of the new moves, because there are quite a few of them, and Cerebi has not updated to showcase in a nice, neat format who gets all of those moves, but I will sl slightly touch on some of them today as we see some of the Pokemon uh, that do get them. Regardless, that'll be a different video, maybe tomorrow, depending on how fast Joe Merrick is able to turn around. Joe Merrick and the team are able to turn around to all of the uh, information on Surrey, but we do have the new Pokemon and all of their movesets and all of their stats and stuff have been data mined and they're all right here in front of us. Obviously, you can go check this out for yourself. It's just on Cerebi.net, but I'm gonna cover it in a nice, concise way for you. Before we do that, if you wouldn't mind liking, commenting, subscribing, helping this video reach more people, helping this channel grow. We're trying to get to 10K by the end of the year. We have like two weeks to do it, still below 9K. So again, I have no idea if it's possible, but thank you so much for all of the effort you've put in. Any buttons you press while you're on the video today to engage, to try and push it to more people, I'd be very, very appreciative of that. Thank you, friend. Uh, and if you're not already a subscriber of the channel, I post weird teams all the time in VGC, whatever the current rule set is. So, so give me a subscribe and uh, you know, see for yourself and then unsubscribe later if it turns out that I'm completely whack. I'm going to begin by covering the Pokemon that were announced prior to the release of the game. So if you wanna stick around for that stuff, you can and then leave. I'll leave another spoiler later on and we're gonna start with this guy. Archaludon. Not in love with this Pokemon's design. However, if it means that we get Gen 5 remakes or Gen new Gen 5, you know, black and white three or whatever like that, then I'm all for it because it does seem to be a tie in there. Uh, it is Steel Dragon type and it doesn't look like it lost any of its abilities. So the abilities here on Archaludon are Stamina, Sturdy, and Stalwart. These are all the same abilities that Duraludon got. You evolve it via a new item called the Metal Alloy. And uh, I'm gonna jump down to its stats before we go over its move pool necessarily, because this is important. People didn't, people weren't sure if, you know, obviously everybody's like, Eviolate, Duraludon is gonna be a thing. Obviously, if Archaludon's good enough, then the ability to run a different item that is not Eviolite, well, that's something. We've got base 90 HP, 105 attack, 130 defense, 125 special attack, 65 special defense, and 85 speed. For reference, Duraludon and Archaludon share the same speed stat. Duraludon has 50 special defense, whereas Archaludon only gained uh, 15 base special defense. So uh, a Violite Duraludon would have double its special defense. Like it would have way more special defense than Archaludon. Uh, but Archaludon can hold an Assault Vest better than Duraludon can. Um, special attack, it increased by base five. Physical defense, Duraludon uh, has 115, Archaludon has 130, meaning it, that also increased by base 15. So again, with Eviolite, Duraludon has better physical defense, okay? But Archaludon isn't a slouch in that department. It is technically a better physical defense stat. Uh, the attack stat, which isn't gonna matter to you really at all, uh, was increased by 10 as well, and the HP was increased by 20. Pretty minor increments, but it's all the way across the board, except for the speed stat, which I think is interesting. Um, to me, the biggest thing is that because they didn't change the abilities here on Duraludon, it means that Duraludon does have a reason to be used over, or sorry, on they didn't change the abilities on Archaludon. Archaludon has a reason to be used over Duraludon. If they changed Stalwart to something else, some new signature ability that's not as good, then Duraludon with Stalwart, I mean, that's one of the best abilities, I think, in uh, introduced in Sword and Shield. The fact that you uh, ignore the opposing Pokemon's abilities that draw and moves, abilities and moves. So basically like, follow me and Rage Powder do not work on it, and neither does Ally Switch. 
which is really, really nice. And our Chalodon is technically able to use Life Orb better. It's able to use Assault Vest better. It's able to use every single item better besides a Violet. And so I think Duraludon will have a usage, but our Chalodon is better Duraludon in every single way. There's no missed ability. There's no you know, anything like that. Uh, so if you want to run any other kind of item, Archaladon's kind of your pick, which is, you know, it's good to see new Pokemon getting shine, I suppose. Some of the moves here that uh, are very interesting. We have further confirmation on what Electro Shot is. Uh, it is an electric move, so not stab, but it is seemingly the signature move of our Chaladon. Uh, the user gathers electricity on the first turn, boosting his special attack stat, and then fires a high voltage shot on the next turn. The shot will be immediately fired in rain, so kind of like in a solar beam situation, but with rain, uh, you will take in, it's like, it's like meteor beam more, I should say, because you get a special attack boost and then you attack on the same turn. Our Chaladon's gonna be using a lot of rain teams, that's kind of cool. Snarl was there before. Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse, your Thunderbolt. Some nice coverage there. Draco Meteor, of course. Steel Beam, not gonna use it because you get Flash Cannon. Uh, Terra Blast could be good for this Pokemon. It does get Meteor Beam, which I think Duraludon got. Uh, okay, and then here's a couple of the new moves that it gets. Hard Press, uh, which <laughs> I love that name because I think that it's a reference to like being hard pressed, but it's this physical steel move. Uh, and the more HP the target has left, the greater the power. I think it's a cool move. I don't think it's used on uh, our Chalodon very well because it is a physical steel move, and you're gonna just you're just gonna want to use Flash Cannon with that incredible special attack stat. Uh, and then Dragon Cheer, which raises its allies' morale with a Draconic Cry so that future attacks have a heightened chance of landing critical hits. And it rouses dragon types more. So it raises the critical hit ratio of your allies. No idea if it raises it for the allies in the back too. It kind of implies that it is because it says allies, but technically you only have one ally if you're only applying it to Pokemon that are on the field at the time that you use it. And seemingly it raises the critical hit ratio of dragon types even more, uh, which I don't know if that means that it raises it itself. If you're the dragon type using Draconic or Dragon Cheer, I don't know. I also don't know that Archaladon's a Pokemon. Archaladon to me is like an attacker. I would imagine that a move like this would be used on a, like a better support Pokemon. Maybe an Aveolite Duraludon would use this because it would be so defensively bulky and then Dragon Cheer could help. It's a little bit more of a niche move because it is like dealing with critical hits and stuff, but not impossible, but not not game shattering. Uh, and that's, that's it. So I think it's a really cool Pokemon in the rain. It's gonna be really nice. And I'm excited to see what people do with our Chalodon. Moving on, we've got Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt is here. One of the crazier designs that obviously has grown on so many people, I think. Everybody was really confused at first. Uh, and of course, this Pokemon has Protosynthesis. Now, what does that mean for it? Let's take a look. Electric Dragon type. It's got base 75 speed, 89 special defense, 137 special attack. For reference, our Chalodon had a base 125 special attack. So Raging Bolt special attack sets through the freaking roof. It's got 91 defense. 73 attack 125 hp not great defenses uh and its speed is sort of middling however it does get protosynthesis which is very important now i haven't actually uh mathed this out i don't know if you can make it so that my guess is that you probably can get it so that the speed is what's boosted but i'm not entirely sure with a with a booster energy that is not that it's totally gonna matter and the reason it's not totally gonna matter is because of raging bolts signature move uh thunderclap the move enables the user to attack first with a jolt of electricity uh the move fails if the target is not readying an attack special electric sucker punch base 70 uh which is pretty solid and I'm with that 137 or whatever special attack stat yeah that's gonna hurt um unless you resist it nothing's immune to sucker punch there are things that are immune to thunderclap so that's something to keep note of as we're going to try and look for counters for all these Pokemon. Dragon Hammer, not interesting. Rising Voltage, this is interesting. I actually saw Weedle Tweedle tweet this. Rising Voltage, at time of recording, has not been discovered as a move that you can learn or make a TM out of or anything like that. So weirdly, if all the move, a lot of the moves did return that were, you know, those Isle of Armor moves and are now TMs in the Indigo Disc, Rising Voltage isn't. So this is a signature move technically of 
Raging Bolt because it is the only Pokemon that has it in its learn set. Kind of interesting. Obviously, if you're not aware, that's the move that uh, its power is doubled if on electric terrain. So it turns into a 140 base special electric move, uh, which is interesting purely because I think at some point we're going to get Maridon and Coridon battles. You know, we're going to see a lot of like Coridon teams and Maridon teams when they're allowed. And you would put a Raging Bolt onto a Coridon team to take advantage of Protosynthesis and the Sun. But if a Maridon were to come out on the other side of the field, they'd be setting electric terrain for you to also take advantage of Rising Voltage potentially, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it gets Dragon Pulse, it gets Zap Cannon. You're not gonna use that over Thunderclap or Rising Voltage, probably Thunderbolt as well. Gets Volt Switch, kind of a cool slower Volt Switch setter. I can see this Pokemon being a really good Assault Vest user, to be honest, uh, with like, you know, Thunderclap, Volt Switch, Draco Meteor, and like a Terra Blaster. It does get Solar Beam, so again, on those Sun teams, you could use Assault Vest, still get the Protosynthesis boost. Be you know, throwing solar beams out there as well. It gets Weather Ball, and here are a couple of its new moves that it gets. It gets Calm Mind, uh, it gets Taunt, it gets T-Wave. Yes, it gets, it gets Snarl, uh, Draco Meteor, of course. And here's some of the new moves. It gets Supercell Slam. This is not a move that's gonna be used on Raging Bolt, but it's good to take, be aware of. Electrifies its body and drops onto the target to inflict damage. The move never misses. Oh, sorry, if the move misses, it does miss. If the move misses, the user takes damage instead. I think that also applies to if you use it into a protect, is my guess. I think it's kind of like a high jump kick uh, and has 95 accuracy. So really accurate, but does have that chance to miss naturally. But it's a physical 100 base power move. Uh, I think the biggest thing is that, again, I'm going to cover this in a different video. I think Iron Hands get Supercell Slam, which is kind of kind of nuts. Definitely way better than Wild Charge. Uh, we get Electro Web here. That's very interesting because you can make things slower than you, even if you're not the, the fastest Pokemon in the world with Electro Web. And it gets Dragon Cheer, as we said, um, on, on our Chalodon. It gets Breaking Swipe, physical move, not really going to use it. It gets Ancient Power. Uh, I could see this Pokemon getting, getting some real play here, but I don't know that it's so good that it's going to rule all of VGC userdom. Uh, and I definitely think that, like, I said all the things about, I think it would maybe be used on Coridon teams in the future, but it is, like, immediately outclassed by Miraidon in the fact that it's also an electric dragon type. So there's also a chance that this thing is usable now, and then the second that they allow Restricteds, it's, uh, it's sort of outclassed there. I'm excited to try it out. I'm excited to use it. Let's move on. The next Pokemon pre-revealed here is Iron Crown. Iron Crown is the Cobalion Paradox variant, and it's Steel Psychic. It gets Quark Drive, of course. And why is that important? Let's check out its stats. 98 speed. Definitely can boost the speed on this guy, which is cool. 108 special defense. Really solid special defense. And a 100 physical defense. It's got base 122 special attack uh, and base 90 HP and base 72 physical attack. So this thing is not like Cobalion where you could go either way. You're going to want to run that special attack stat. Base 122. A lot of really amazing special attackers revealed so far here. Uh, and I'm very excited about this Pokemon's stat spread. I think it's much better than Raging Bolts is. Raging Bolts is a little sporadic for me. But this Pokemon feels like it's got a little bit of everything. I don't know how much the 90 HP is going to hurt its ability to live moves, but these defense stats, I think, are really solid. Both defense stats being 100 and a little bit over 100. I think that's really solid. Uh, it has Quark Drive. I think that kind of any of those stats can be boosted because they're so close together. Although, again, I have not mathed this out yet. Looking for special moves. So it gets Psy Shock. It gets Flash Cannon, of course, of course. It does get Sacred Sword. It gets Terra... Uh, Tachyon Cutter, which is better than Flash Cannon, actually, because it's a base 50 power move, but it hits twice and never misses. So you can break Sashes and technically does 100 base power, whereas Flash Cannon only does 80 uh, once everything is all said and done. Uh, and that is a signature move of of Iron Crown. I also don't think I, I uh, actually, I don't think I know this for sure. I'm pretty sure Thunderclap is a signature move, an exclusive move of Raging Bolt. Sorry to keep bouncing back and forth. So Tachyon Cutter, I'm going to keep saying Tarakion Cutter. Uh, you can see why. Uh, Tachyon Cutter is an exclusive move to Iron Crown. 
Uh, gets future sights. Gets volt switch still, which is pretty cool. Uh, I could see a speedier one working, although with... If you're running like a booster energy site, you're not going to get rid of your own boosts with Volt Switch too much, so maybe not. It's got a quick guard, a couple of the things that Cobalion did get. Air Slash. It's got Psychic. Terror Blast, of course. It gets Gravity. Ooh, that's interesting. It gets Supercell Slam. Of course, that's a physical move. Probably not going to use it on Iron Crown. Uh, it gets Expanding Force. In case you weren't aware, Expanding Force did return, like I said. Uh, from that Isle of Armor DLC. It is now again a TM, so a lot of Pokemon get Expanding Force again. That's a big deal. Uh, this Pokemon is one of them. It's nice because it's actually really... I don't know if there have been faster Expanding Force users as I think about it. Who else used Expanding Force back in the day? Were there ones that were like incredibly fast too? I can't remember. Uh, but obviously also really good because if you're running it next to Ndidi, Sucker Punch can't even catch this thing before it's able to use Like it's good. That's a really, really nice. You're going to use that, and it's Stab. Uh, it gets Metal Sound. It also gets Psychic Noise. Psychic Noise is not a new move, right? Uh, actually, I think it is a new move. Is this a new move? The user attacks the target with unpleasant sound waves. For two turns, the target is prevented when recovering HP from recovering HP through moves, abilities, or held items. So for two turns, you're inflicted with some unique status that makes it so that you can't actually recover any HP. I think that's a new move. Or at least it wasn't widespread before, and now it is. I think it's a new move. And it's a 75 base power psychic move. I think that Expanding Force is going to be your bread and butter psychic move to go go for. Next to Tachyon Cutter as your bread and butter steel move. But Psychic Noise could be fun on a team where you're not using psychic terrain. Uh, 75 is not like an awful damage output. And in certain situations, it could be cool. Because if you're running it with like grassy terrain, then your opponent can't even benefit from grassy terrain at all. And lots of Pokemon do run Citrus Berry and stuff like that. So it's interesting. I like Iron Crown a lot more than I thought I was going to. I don't know how usable it'll be, but I think that it has a shot. And I will definitely find use for it. Moving on now to the first Pokemon that you will not know what it is unless you have looked at the data mines or looked at the leaks. Looked at They're not even really leaks. The game's out. Or, or gotten there in the story yourself. So click away if you don't want any spoilers whatsoever. Moving forward, this is your only warning. I am clicking this next Pokemon in three, two, one. Gouging fire, baby. This design is crazy. I think a lot of people were like, is it gonna be a Pterodactyl? Is it gonna be a Triceratops? It looks like they went more of the Triceratops route, um, but they kind of kept the Sabertooth thing, which I guess was Raikou's thing. And they kind of kept, kept like a cat-like thing. I don't know. The It grew on me. I thought it was kind of silly at first, and then I saw somebody on Twitter say, hey, you know, the only two Pokemon that get Sacred Fire are Entei and Ho-Oh. And in the lore, Ho-Oh gave birth to the legendary dogs by reviving them in the fire of Ecruteak City or whatever. So I think it's kind of cool that this Pokemon has the colors of Ho-Oh's wings in its shield and on its stripes and stuff. I think that's pretty neat. Uh, and let's talk about why I think this Pokemon's actually maybe one of the best Pokemon there is. It's really, really good. Fire Dragon is an incredible offensive typing. It hits so many things and defensive typing because you lose your weakness to fairy. Dragon moves hit almost everything uh, for at least neutral damage. Obviously, uh, it is resisted by steel and uh, fairy is immune to dragon moves. But you know what's not resisted by steel and what fairy does not resist is fire moves. So this offensive typing is really, really sick and powerful. Obviously, it gets Protosynthesis. So let's look at what its stats are, shall we? 91 base speed, that's boostable. 93 special defense, not awful. 121 physical defense, really good. This Pokemon can be run physically and bulky and that's really nice for a different reason that I'll get to in a bit. 65 special attack, who cares? 105 HP, not bad. So its defenses are really pretty solid. I could see an assault vest set working already. 115 physical attack physical attacker of course it is of course it is and here are some of the moves we're going to be dealing with here the standouts are we get morning sun would be cool as a recovery option we get this move burning bulwark and what burning bulwark is the user's intensely hot fur protects it from attacks and also burns any attacker that makes direct contact with it it is spiky shield but it inflicts a burn status if you attack into the shield that's really good. I have no idea if going for Burning Bulwark uh, means that you burn Urshifu, and that does matter because Urshifu is going to hit through your shield, but it's still technically hitting the shield, so does it 
get burned tbd not entirely sure but regardless that's a really really good ability because it's just it's just a better protect it's a way better protect if you could just be burning opponents just by sitting there and blocking moves that's insane that's actually one of the better moves i think that was invented for the indigo disc we've got dragon rush we've got outrage flare blitz uh it's got raging fury which is cool raging fury was a move introduced actually in legends arceus uh and was only given to a couple of pokemon i think Arcanine gets it, and Infernape gets it. It's basically a Fire-type Outrage, uh, and obviously it does get Outrage. Uh, but Flare Blitz is also really, really good. Something to note here is that it doesn't appear to get Sacred Fire, which is interesting because really, really strong and was really, really like the reason you'd sort of use Entei that in E-Speed, uh, which we also do not see so far on this thing's move list, just so you're aware. Uh, we do have the fangs, some nice type coverage here. We've got bulldoze, we've got flame charge, which could be interesting on this Pokemon, depending on where you want to protosynthesize. We've got smart strike. It's a steel move. That's cool. Psychic fangs. You can't even set up screens reliably in front of this guy. Dragon claw, of course, probably going to be your go-to dragon move, to be honest. It gets stomping tantrum. That's cool. It gets iron head. That's even better than smart strike. It gets dragon dance. Ooh, it gets Dragon Dance. That's really good for this Pokemon, actually, because you can sit there and live a move, and then just the next turn, you'll be faster. That's really good for this Pokemon. Dragon Dance. Okay, cool. Uh, it gets some special moves here that are good, but not going to be what you pick for it. It gets e Earthquake. It gets Stone Edge. No Rock Slide, but it gets Stone Edge. No Rock Slide, no Rock Slide. Uh, we got Giga Impact. We got Outrage. Already said that. Flare Blitz already knew that. Uh, it gets Roar, it gets Terror Blast, of course, it gets Heat Crash, it gets Scale Shot, which could be even cooler. This is why I was saying that it's really cool that it has such a strong physical defense stat, is because you can use Scale Shot, uh, get a bunch of, like, stab dragon, like, damage off, in, you know, as opposed to just going for Dragon Dance, which I still think is, is interesting. But then you get your speed boosted after Scale Shot comes off, and you lower your defense stat, but who cares if you lower your defense stat? Uh, chances are you had like you you're playing with house money you've got a really good physical defense stat so going to minus one physical defense you're still probably living a bunch of stuff there uh, so it's it's almost like a free scale shot it's not of course not a free scale shot but it's almost like a free scale shot here's another new move that it gets temper flare spurred by desperation the user attacks the target this move's power is doubled if the user's previous move failed it is a fire type stomping tantrum uh, which is pretty cool I don't know that you'd use it over Flare Blitz, but obviously you don't take recoil damage from using Temper Flare. Um, and I think what's cool about that move is that that is not exclusive. It is a very widespread move, more widespread than you think. So Temper Flare, I'm really interested in covering, maybe in tomorrow's video, but in a very video in the new near future, covering all these new moves and all the Pokemon that get them. And it gets Breaking Swipe, another really good physical dragon move that could provide like this Pokemon is not getting hit by physical attacks. You know what I mean? Like it's got a really good physical defense stat to start with. It's got the um, burning bulwark or whatever that move's called. Uh, and it's got breaking swipe. So you're burning things, you're dropping attack stat like you really could. Dragon Cheer on a bulkier Pokemon like this, I could see Dragon Cheer working a little bit better to increase your critical hit ratio. If that's the strategy you're running. Again, it's a little bit of a niche strategy to start with. Really, really good Pokemon here. And I think its design has already grown on me. I like it a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people actually really like its design. So, cool. Excited to see Gouging Fury. I'm going to leave it alone for now. Moving on to the final Pokemon of the Paradox Mons. Yeah, the final Paradox Mon. If you haven't put the math together, we're going to be talking here about Iron Boulder. Terrakion Cutter. This Pokemon is Rock Psychic. So, all of the Swords of Justice dropped their fighting. Kept, kept their uh, unique typing, dropped their fighting typing, and picked up Psychic. Just like the legendary dogs <laughs> uh, picked up a dragon typing. Uh, it gets Quark Drive, of course. Now, why is that important? I saw this Pokemon's design, and I was like, yeah, that's pretty much what I expected uh, Terrakion to look like. I did not expect this. This Pokemon is base 124 speed. For reference, Fluttermane's base 135. Okay. This could force Fluttermane to run like max speed instead of like what I do is I like cheat down my speed just so I can get the speed boost without actually having to run full speed. Iron Bundle's 136. These Pokemon are still faster. 
that is not like it's basically outspeeding everything besides these guys base 124 speed 108 special defense this guy's a special monster 65 special attack who cares base 80 physical defense not awesome base 90 hp base 120 attack uh so it's a physical attacker quark drive i'm pretty sure speed i mean speed and physical attack are boostable here it gets psycho cuts it gets rock tomb it gets sacred sword so it kept that fighting move that's cool it gets a new move here uh and this might be a signature exclusive move it gets mighty cleave i'm pretty sure it is what mighty cleave is is a base 95 physical rock move that hits even if the target protects itself rock is not an easy typing to resist okay very few typings resist it off the top of my head uh what resists it steel rock doesn't even resist itself i'm blanking i think it might only be steel um and uh you can hit something with base 95 with that beefy 120 physical attack stat and it can't protect itself so it's a it's like Urshifu's ability, but in just a single move, which is really, really cool. Uh, it gets Swords Dance, so you know you can hit things even harder through Protect. Who cares that it's only 95 base physical attack? It gets Quick Guard, it gets Mega Horn, it gets Stone Edge as well, although I don't know that I'd go for Stone Edge with five more base power if I have a 95 hits through Protect in VGC at least. Mighty Cleave is definitely the way to go. It gets Aerial Ace. It gets uh, Brick Break, it gets Zen Headbutt, it gets Body Slam, Rock Blast, Poison Jab, Iron Head, gets X Scissor, it gets Wild Charge, like a good Proto or Quark Drive boy there, it gets Earthquake, it gets Stone Edge, it gets Giga Impact, it gets Close Combat still, that's really good and important for a Pokemon weak to steal Pokemon to have a Close Combat. Uh, it's got Solar Blade, it's got Double Edge, and it's got Throat Chop. Lots of really nice type coverage in here, too. I hadn't looked at that yet. Uh, so, yeah, I think this Pokemon's a bit of a surprise for me. I think the biggest, the biggest thing that this guy does not have is a good defensive typing. I don't think Rock Psychic is all that bad physically, but right now, Rock Psychic is especially bad. The reason being, you're... Weak to both Urshifu. Sucker Punch will still outspeed you, even if you do outspeed. Uh, and so will Aqua Jet. Um, you are weak to Rillaboom. You're weak to Rillaboom, you're weak to both Urshifus. You're weak to Iron Bundle, which we talked about as one of the only Pokemon that can outspeed this thing. You're weak to Fluttermane. All of these Pokemon have stab moves that are super effective. These are the best Pokemon in the game. Uh, you're weak to, like, every single Ogre Pond has at least one move that will be super effective against you. It's not a great typing. And so I think for that reason, Iron Boulder might get clipped a little bit. However, there's always Terra. And I think that it is usable on the right teams. I just don't know. I think the typing might be what holds it back a bit, but we will see, we will see. All right, moving on here to a highly anticipated Pokemon. We're gonna be talking about Diplin's evolution here. If you've made it this far and you still don't wanna be spoiled for whatever reason for this, this is your last chance. Hi, Drapple. Look at Hydrapple. Just a long dragon neck boy sticking out of an apple. I think, and I haven't seen it in game yet. I'm pretty sure it does have two heads. I think it's like, I think this is like a state of it, but I do think that it moves. It's called Hydrapple, right? So it's got to have multiple heads. It might even have three heads. Oh, you know what? I think these little things on the front are other heads. So I think it like pops out during its animations and stuff. Uh, it is Grass Dragon, not Bug Dragon. Some people thought it was going to be Bug Dragon. I didn't have so much hope for that, to be totally honest with you. Uh, it's Grass Dragon. And I also don't know that Bug Dragon would be good for it. Uh, it's abilities, not a Paradox Mon. So we do have actual abilities here. Uh, Super Sweet Syrup, it keeps. So already Diplin's completely outclassed, in my opinion. You can still run a Violite on it, but like it's not a Duraludon situation. It's, you know, you're probably going to be running this Pokemon if you're going to run something. It gets Regenerator, which is really good. Uh, and it gets Sticky Hold, which means that its items cannot be taken. Less good, less less applicable, but that's okay. Let's jump down to its stats first. It's only got 44 base speed. That is slow enough for a Trick Room. Some Pokemon are like a little too high, whatever. This is slower than like Blood Moon or Saluna. 
Uh, and so I think 44 speed could be really nice for Trick Room teams. Now you're not really gonna be using it outside of Trick Room necessarily, because you only got eight ba base 80 special defense. You got base 110 physical defense. 120 special attack. Lots of Pokemon getting like right around 120 physical attack or special attack. That's the uh, DLC power creep for you. And base 80 physical attack. So a special attacker for sure. And the fun thing I think about this Pokemon is that it gets a signature move. Uh, actually, oh, Diplin will evolve into Hydrapple when it le levels up knowing the move Dragon Cheer. There you go. This Pokemon has a signature move, exclusive move called Fickle Beam. Uh, the user shoots a beam of light to inflict damage. Sometimes all the user's heads shoot beams in unison, doubling the move's power. That's really fun and really cool. I haven't seen this thing in game yet, so I really want to see what the animation looks like. I want to see if they incorporated the other heads coming out. But it's a base 80 dragon type special move, which is pretty good if you have a, uh, a base 120 special attack stat. But it also has a chance of going to 160. I don't know what the chance is. I don't know if it's like half of the time it's a 160 base power move. If that's the case, that's really good. Because uh, that's even stronger than... What's Draco? Draco's 130. So some percentage of the time, this thing is 160 base power. That's really coming from 120 base special attack. That's a really, really strong move. Um, but of course, because it isn't all the time, it does call into question just how reliable it is. It's also 100% accurate. So Super Sweet Syrup really doesn't even benefit that. Uh, it still gets Syrup Bomb. Of course it does. Useful, however, I think Syrup Bomb on this Pokemon becomes weirdly more of like a, can I actually Syrup Bomb my own teammates? Although because it's stronger, I just, I think this thing is like so Trick Room coded. I guess maybe it doesn't have to be. But if you are running it in Trick Room, you're probably not even going to use Super Sweet Syrup because, or sorry, uh, Syrup Bomb because you uh, don't necessarily want to make your opponent slower in your Trick Room. Gets Dragon Pulse, of course. It gets Recover. It gets Energy Ball. It gets Power Whip. Not going to use that. Uh, we see Grass Knot. We see Giga Drain, Dragon Pulse, Energy Ball. Not the best coverage so far. It gets Pollen Puff still. Yep, that was a Diplin move, uh, which is very good. It gets Earth Power now. That's... Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Uh, it gets Leaf Storm. Definitely could run Leaf Storm uh, and Energy Ball or something. So you're not always lowering your special attack. It, of course, gets Draco Meteor. I could see you running Draco Meteor and Twin Beam in a similar, you know, way. Uh, Terra Blast. <laughs> Grassy Glide. Oh, yeah, yeah. It gets Dragon Cheer. This Pokemon might be one of the better Pokemon to use Dragon Cheer. That could be interesting. And especially with the Draco Meteor, it could be interesting to run. Like, can you run, what is it, Scope Lens on this Pokemon and use Dragon Cheer so that you're not even actually losing... Uh, your special attack, like your special attack drops aren't even factoring in because you're critting so much with Leaf Storm and Draco Meteor. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, gets Sucker Punch still, of course. Uh, gets Yawn. I could see that being used. I don't, I don't think that's new though. And it gets Infestation still. Interesting Pokemon. I don't think it's broken by any means, but I think it's better than Diplin and Wolfie got to rank one with Diplin. So this thing should be able to do that too then, right? Moving on to one of two... New legendary Pokemon. This one, obviously, we knew already, but I wanted to save it till now. We're talking about Terrapagos here. And Terrapagos has this initial form, which we're calling the standard form. Then it's got its terrestrial form, which is the thing that's on the, uh, you know, the box art and whatnot. And then it's got its Terraform Zero, which is this crazy baloney thing where there's like a Terrapagos on top of a Terrapagos and there's like a ring around it. I have not encountered this in game yet. <laughs> So I don't even know the full story or if uh, you can even use this form. Technically, I don't even know how you get to use this form. Is this what it looks like when it Terra's? I don't know. It's got three new abilities. It's not as crazy as you think. Terra Shift is the standard form ability. When the Pokemon enters a battle, it absorbs the energy around itself and transforms into its Terrastal form. This is its Terrastal form. So you throw this thing out in the field. And I guess unless Weezing's there, you can terrestrialize into this guy. Uh, and that's mostly what you're going to see used. Again, by the way, this isn't even going to be in Regulation F, most likely. This We're talking about, like, in the future for uh, uh, restricted formats. This thing's ability is Terra Shell. The Pokemon's shell contains the powers of each type. All damage-dealing moves that hit the Pokemon when its HP is full will not be very effective. 
it's basically multi-scale. It's a little different than multi-scale, but it's basically multi-scale. Because multi-scale is like when you're at full HP, you only take half the damage. Which is effectively like the like the move being not very effective. Now, moves can still be super effective against like Dragonite, I guess. But it's beefy. It's beefy. It'll be living some stuff. Uh, and then it's Terraform Zero ability. And again, I don't even know. Is this like the... I don't know if this is like Eternatus' hand that we never actually got to use. Uh, but when Tropicos changes into its stellar form, it uses its hidden powers to eliminate all effects of weather and terrain, reducing them to zero. I think that what might ha be happening here is that even though this is called the terrestrial form, it's not terrestrialized. And then when you terrestrialize Tropicos, you get this thing, kind of like Ogre Pond. And then this thing has Terraform Zero, uh, which means that it basically is like a better, an even better Rayquaza because there's no, there's no weather and there's no terrain. Which is going to be like, once in the restricted format, you could use this thing to counter, to hard counter, Coridon and Muridon at the same time. And, for the record, Kyogre and Groudon and whatnot. I think for that reason, this thing can be really good um, when we finally see it. And what's really cool is that you obviously like have time to terrestrialize because this thing isn't going to die when it takes its first hit. And it's all, they're all just pure normal types, which I think is new. Like, there's never been a legendary that was just a pure normal type. I think people expected that. Um, but for that reason, it's only weak to fighting and resists ghost. So that's a really good defense. Like, normal's a really good defensive typing. Let's talk stats here. We've got a 60 base speed. Not the fastest thing in the world, but I don't think that's what it's here for. It's here for a long time, not a good time. We've got 85 special defense. Uh, oh, sorry, hold on. I'm realizing these are the stat bars for the different ones. Let's start with the Terrastal form because this thing, again, unless it's wheezing, it's, you're never going to see it. The standard form. We've got 85 speed. I'm so sorry. Base 60 speed? No. 85 is actually... That's okay. 110 special defense. Really good special defense. 110 physical defense. Really solid physical defense. Uh, base 105 special attack and 95 attack. So I actually could see it running physical attacks if you absolutely needed it to. Uh, and then it actually gets a stat boost when you terrestrialize as well. I'm pretty sure I'm right about this being the terrestrialized form and not an unusable form, uh, where it gets a little bit of a bump to its, oh, not even a little bit of a bump. It gets a bump to its special attack stat, jumping from 105 to 130. Really, really good. And its physical attack does get a boost too, but it only gets a boost from 95 to 105. So scratch what I said before. Oh my gosh, and it's HP. It's HP goes up by so much. It goes from 95 base HP to 160 base HP. This thing is an absolute sponge. Uh, but a sponge that can also kill you. <laughs> I don't know, special attacks that you're going to be running special attacking moves. Let's see what it gets here. Ancient power, we've got Terra Star Storm. This is a new move. With the power of its crystals, the user bombards and eliminates the target. When used by Terrapagos in its stellar form, which is that final form, the move damages all opposing Pokemon. So it becomes a spread move only when stellar Terrapagos uses it. Now it says eliminates the target. I think that that's just flavor. It is 120 special attacking normal move. So it's not going to be super effective against anything, unless we're talking about the new Terrastal mechanic, which I'm not even going to cover in this video, but... Technically, it can be super effective against stuff. Spoilers. Uh, and uh, becomes a spread move. So that's kind of interesting. I don't think it's actually the most broken move in the world, uh, especially because it does rely on becoming a spread move when terrestrialized. Uh, we've got try attack, which is cool. We've got earth power, always good. Um, oh, it's just taking me through all of the different learn sets. Yep, it gets rock polish, which could actually be really neat. I could see that maybe working. We've got Stored Power, we've got Dazzling Gleam, we've got Flash Cannon. I see Stored Power and now I'm looking for like, does it get Calm Mind? Uh, it gets Power Jam, it gets Dark Pulse, it gets Dragon Pulse, Aura Sphere, Energy Ball, Surf, it gets Surf, that's actually pretty nice. It gets Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, it does get Calm Mind. Earth Power, like I said, it gets Ice Beam. So it gets all the Elemental Beams, it's got coverage for days. Not a ton of stab, but it's got coverage for days. Bug Buzz, this thing gets. It gets like all of these moves of every type, which I think is neat. Uh, toxic, it does get Gravity. You know I like that. It gets Weather Ball, which I don't think you'd ever use because you're turning off the weather. <laughs> so maybe that's a little bit counterintuitive. Um, it gets Scorching Sands, which is back as a TM. So that's actually probably even better than Earth Power uh, because you can burn opponents with it. 
and it gets Meteor Beam, which is absolutely usable on this thing, uh, because this thing does have an open item slot. It doesn't need an item to be able to use its special form. It doesn't need an item to pop Quark Drive or Protosynthesis, so you can run like a Power Herb Meteor Beam in this thing. I mean, this thing would just crush stuff from there. You Meteor Beam, and then you go for that Star Storm, Terra Star Storm thing to get the stab, normal, whatever. And I think because this is its stero uh, stellar form, its stellar form's type is normal, which means that it can't be any Terra type besides normal, or probably its Terra type is stellar, the stellar Terra type, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but uh, there's a lot of implications of that. Okay, that is Terrapagos. I think it's pretty cool. Again, less important right away because we're not going to see it be usable, is my guess, in Regulation F. Um, it'd be crazy if they let this thing lose on Regulation F. I think it's a really, really good restricted mon uh, that counters a lot of stuff. I think you'll see a lot of Terrapagos. Might even be sick of it uh, later on in the year. Let's cover the final Pokemon here. This video is way longer than I thought it was going to be. We're talking about Petrarunt. This Pokemon was long rumored and speculated on for its place in the lore. I have not reached this part of the DLC, so I don't want to be talking out of my butt here. But I believe this is the Pokemon that came from Kitakami and is like poisoning the minds and bodies and emotions of the Toxic Chain Trio. I believe this is like the Toxic Chain Origin Pokemon and maybe a certain lovable... Uh, Messy Bund NPC. Uh, let's look at it. Well, let's look at this ability first. It's got a signature move. Or sorry, a signature ability. I think it's got a signature move too. It's Poison Ghost type. So it is Gengar. Uh, and it gets Poison Puppeteer. Pokemon poisoned by Petrarunt's moves will also become confused. Not the most reliable thing in the world, but certainly incredibly annoying. It basically double statuses. It reminds me of, like, um, Venomoth in the original Pokemon trading card game, if that's not too deep a reference for you. Uh, I think what's also fun is that this Pokemon's based on, like, some story in Japan about a peach, and uh, everybody was like, oh, there might be a peach Pokemon. We might see a peach Pokemon. Guess what? It's a Pecha Pokemon. At least in the English in uh, uh, localization, they made it Pecha because that is the Pokemon version of a peach. Apples are still apples, though. Not sure why that is. Let's go to the stats. It's got 88 speed. Workable, not amazing. It's got 88 special defense. Not amazing. Special attack is 88, not amazing. Physical defense jumps up to double that at 160 physical defense. And its attack stat is 88, not amazing. Its HP is 88, not amazing. It feels like something weird's happening with this Pokemon. Like, part of me is like, is there like a form that Cerebi's missing or something? Uh, because this is not remarkable. Uh, stats wise physical defense sure but you're gonna have a special Pokemon and physical defense on a like really good physical defense on a ghost poison type is not necessarily awesome because those those typings don't resist a ton you know what I mean it does however because it's a ghost type technically it is immune to all of Terrapagos's stab which is interesting uh, it gets Destiny Bond. It gets Fake Tears. It gets Parting Shot. Not a lot of Pokemon get that, but this thing does. It gets Shadow Ball. Nasty Plot. Recover. Toxic, of course. And it gets a signature move, I think exclusive, called Malignant Chain. Probably, definitely exclusive, right? Uh, a user pours toxins into the target by wrapping them in a toxic corrosive chain. This may also leave the target badly poisoned. I don't know what the effect is on this. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a pretty good effect chance like the chance of poisoning is pretty high but it's base 100 poison part of me is like i wish that it got like i don't think it gets mortal spin but like in my mind because of that ability poison puppeteer i'd rather have a move that definitely applies poison technically you can toxic stuff but definitely applies poison then like does a ton of damage and might apply poison right maybe that would be broken but in my mind it's like if your move is doing a hundred base power you might as well just kill the thing. Who cares if you're poisoning it and, and like, that's just me. Although it's special, you know, it's attacking stats are not amazing, so it's not going to be doing it, like, one-shotting things too much. Uh, it gets Acid Spray. It gets Endure. It gets Foul Play. It gets Imprison, Gunk Shot. Does it get Trick Room? I haven't seen that yet. It gets Shadow Ball. It gets, I said that. It gets Sludge Bomb, uh, Phantom Force. 
Toxic Spite, Poltergeist, Sludge Wave, of course, it gets Mean Look, doesn't even get Trick Room. Uh, this Pokemon's underwhelming to me, and part of me is like, does it get a new form at some point? Does it, like, I don't totally know. Is it sort of just like a story beat here for this Pokemon to be here? I'm not entirely sure, but to me, this is the worst of all of the new Pokemon, and we did save it for last, because that's the way you want to end a video. <laughs> Uh, regardless, I'm very excited about all of these new Pokemon. I also don't think that Petra Run is going to be usable immediately. In my mind, this is maybe also like a mythical or like a restricted Mon. You can go ahead and let this one be usable. I really don't think it's going to be that much of an issue. Uh, but yeah, let me know. Which is your favorite new Pokemon? Which Pokemon are you excited to use on the ladder? Which Pokemon do you think is going to be the worst to go up against? Because it's just so broken. I'm so excited to hear everybody's thoughts um, and again, I will be releasing more videos in which I talk about all of the new moves and I didn't even cover all of the new moves in this video. I don't think, maybe I touched on them, but there were some moves that I talked about that more Pokemon get. And so that will affect their viability. And we'll talk about that in a different video too, like I said, and if you wouldn't mind before you leave, hitting the buttons, liking, commenting, subscribing, helping this video reach more people. We're still going to say that we're on the road to 100 K 10 K. 100 hundred by the end of the year as close as we can get it i'd be so appreciative thank you so so much just really excited for january when we get to put some of these things to the test and until then uh we will be i will be talking about more of these pokemon i'll probably rank all the new pokemon stuff like that uh and maybe we'll even get a stream or two before the new rule set goes live in which we can practice with teams in regulation f against each other and maybe we'll get some more clarification on specifically what regulation f is because right now i think it only says that it opens up new pokemon from the indigo disc to be usable so not totally sure thank you so much for watching this video in the first place and until next time my name is berm see you later